guys, how's it going? If you're new to the channel, my name is Awesome, and this is my channel, Autocrave. And you're probably asking yourself, why am I comparing a Koenigsegg Jamera against an Aston Martin DBS Superleggero? The reason being is since the all new Koenigsegg Jamera and the Aston Martin DBS Superleggero are pretty competitive in the Grand Tourer or GT segment or class of all vehicles, as you'll see later on in the video. I want to add that a GT or a Grand Tourer is a car or a vehicle that can keep a passenger or passengers comfortable for a longer period of time typically, yet the performance figures are very, very impressive. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the latest and greatest Autocrave content, and hit the like button also. It would really help our channel to grow to a large amount on YouTube. I actually had a subscriber that asked me what are the subcategories under each larger category? For example, uh, you take performance. Um, if you have performance, like what are the categories that go under it to make the score? Like what makes a three out of three? What makes a two out of two? What makes a one out of one? So I'm gonna go over that in this video. For the subcategories or categories that make up performance, there are seven of them and uh, each subcategory is worth a total of three points. So all of them together would equal 21 points. And so in order for a car or vehicle to get a one out of three using my ranking system, um, the car has to go receive zero to seven out of 21 points. But in order for a car to get a two out of three, the car has to get somewhere between an eight to a 14 out of 21 for my ranking system. And in order for a car or vehicle to get a 3 out of 3 for my ranking system, the car or vehicle has to get between a 15 out of 21 to a 21 out of 21 in the performance category. Starting off with performance, we got the Koenigsegg Jamera, and the engine which the Jamera has is a 2 liter 3 cylinder engine, which is twin turbocharged. And both the rear wheels and the back have a 500 horsepower electric motor and a front electric motor that by itself produces 100 horsepower. And that is essentially known as a hybrid powertrain where you have both a gasoline powered engine and electric motors or multiple sources of uh, power to power the vehicle. For some reason, the 0 to 60 time is not provided by Koenigsegg, but the 0 to 62 time or the 99.8 kilometers per hour time is 1.9 seconds, which is really, really, really impressive. And the horsepower figure for the Jamera is 600 horsepower, just the engine working by itself, and 1700 horsepower with the hybrid powertrain or with the engine and the electric motors. 443 pound-feet of torque just with the Koenigsegg engine alone is wild and the 2580 pound-feet of torque with the whole hybrid system or the mixed powertrain is quite wild as well. The top speed, weight, and the Nürburgring time for the Koenigsegg Jamera is uh, that the top speed is not yet determined or there is no set top speed yet because of how new the Koenigsegg Jamera is. The weight is 4,078 pounds, which is more towards the heavier side, and the Nürburgring time is not even uh, told or disclosed by Koenigsegg yet due to how new the Jamera is. Given all this information, the total score which I would give the Jamera for performance is a 3 out of 3 because of how impressive Koenigsegg has made the Jamera in terms of performance, in terms of engine, 0 to 60 time, horsepower, torque, etc. For the performance for the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera, the engine which Aston Martin put for the DBS Superleggera is a 5.2 liter V12 engine that has a bi-turbo setup, meaning there are two turbochargers. The 0 to 60 time for the coupe is 3.2 seconds, and the 0 to 60 is the same as 96.6 kilometers per hour. And the 0 to 62 miles per hour time given by Aston Martin for the coupe is 3.4 seconds now for the horsepower number for the coupe that is going to be 715 horsepower and for the convertible the horsepower figure is also 715 horsepower so even for the convertible and the coupe both have the same amount of horsepower 
The torque figure is also impressive for both the coupe and convertible being at 663 pound-feet of torque. The top speed of the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera being 211 miles per hour for both the coupe and the convertible is such a feat or accomplishment for Aston Martin. The weight of the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera being around 4,100 pounds for the coupe and around 4,500 pounds for the convertible or what Aston Martin calls the Volante is more towards the heavy side but since it is a GT or Grand Tour uh, it is understandable. For the Nürburgring time for the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera there is some trouble trying to find this maybe because Aston Martin didn't release a time for the DBS Superleggera on the Nürburgring. For performance I would give the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera a 3 out of 3 ranking because of how impressive the engine performance is, 0 to 60 time, engine, torque, weight, etc. despite being a GT or Grand Tourer. For exterior design, there are three subcategories or categories under exterior design that allow me to rank or give the car or vehicle a score. And those are how elegant or stylish the car or vehicle is for the class that the car or vehicle is in, how unique the car or vehicle is for the class that that is in and how how much of a bargain or how much is the design in terms of price and or you could say how is the design worth the price of the car or vehicle the Koenigsegg Jamira for exterior design is elegant or stylish really unique for what the car actually is because it's the first mega GT I believe and is definitely worth the price since you are getting a very exclusive um, and unique car. For those reasons, I'd give the Koenigsegg Jamira a clear 3 out of 3. Keep it up Koenigsegg. Although there are many opinions on design, the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera sure does that well by earning a 3 out of 3 for exterior design. Good job Aston Martin. The score of the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera sure doesn't hurt from exterior design because of how elegant or stylish the DBS Superleggera is how unique the design of the car is, and how much the design fits the price. Now we're on interior design, and subcategories or the categories that go under interior design are ergonomics, like how all the features, buttons, and screens work, for example, in the car or vehicle, how much is the interior worth for the price you're paying for the car or vehicle, and the technology that's offered. We got started the Koenigsegg Jumeirah for this, and the Jumeirah's interior is not overcrowded at all, it's very roomy in fact, yet all the systems slash items are easy to use or ergonomic. The interior is definitely worth the price. For technology in the Koenigsegg Jamera, there is a digital TFT display that is offered for the driver to see as he or she is driving. And there is also a singular Tesla Model 3 light display, which is pretty efficient and has all the features one can desire. The positives of the interior of the Koenigsegg Jumeirah is the real reason I'm going to give the Jumeirah a 3 out of 3 in terms of interior design. Koenigsegg Jumeirah has 4 seats and also has tremendous or a lot of cargo space and space all around the car. While the interior design of the Koenigsegg Jumeirah is for sure outstanding, the interior design of the Aston Martin DBS is not disappointing as well. That's supported by the fact that for the interior design for the Aston Martin, the Aston Martin's interior is very luxurious yet not overcrowded at all. The infotainment system or the screen is very user friendly given the click wheel system and the touchpad to use. The seat controls are very easy to use right next to the center console for the car. The seats are very plush. Premium materials are used. There is a Mercedes formatted infotainment system or the screen you would see in the middle or the center console of the vehicle. And there is a nine speaker standard audio system or an optional Bang Olufsen optional system as well. You'd be correct by thinking or saying that I would give a 3 out of 3 for the interior design of the Aston Martin because of how great the ergonomics are, how price worthy the interior design is worth, and the technology that's offered in the Aston Martin as well. For the front interior space for the DBS Superleggera, there's a lot of space, but for the trunk or the cargo space, there's not a lot of space considering the fact that there can only be a small suitcase that can be fit in the trunk, but for the rear seats, that is definitely not meant for tall adults. I am also going to be dividing up the categories into multiple videos. So, for example, half the categories go in one video, half the categories go in the other video. And let me know down below in the comment section uh, what you guys think about that. 
If you would like, make sure to also check out my introduction to my channel video as well as the 2020 Corvette C8 versus Porsche 911 video. I hope this video was informative and gave a nice insight into comparing the Koenigsegg Jamira and the Aston Martin DBS Superleggera for performance, exterior design, and interior design. And make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the latest and greatest AutoCrate content, and make sure you hit the like button as well. See you next time. Peace.